Section 5 of the Universal Religion Bahaism Its Rise and Social Import This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater The Universal Religion Bahaism Its Rise and Social Import by Hippolyte Dreyfus Bani Section 5 Baghdad On his arrival at Baghdad at the end of 1852 his role became affirmed. He had just left the Ambar prison at Tehran where he had been shut up because of his notoriety in the new sect at the time of the terrible persecutions which followed the attempt upon the life of the Shah. Note. It is known how two fanatical Babis came to Tehran with the criminal purpose of killing the Shah Nasruddin in order to avenge the Bab's martyrdom. Fortunately, he was hardly hurt, but this attempted assassination again drew the fury of the Shiite clergy and of the civil authorities on the sect. And during the weeks which followed the attempt, hundreds of Babis perished. End note. For after some months of imprisonment during which he was submitted to the most cruel treatment as it was evident that he not more than the others had been responsible for the criminal attempt of the two young fanatics and also as the accredited ministers at tehran had transmitted to the shah remonstrances from their respective governments with reference to the continual massacres which for some time had been dishonouring persia a ferman gave him his liberty and permitted him to live outside imperial territory in the holy places where the martyred imams repose the tombs of karbala and najaf note karbala and najaf near baghdad where the tombs of Hussein and Ali are to be found, are the most celebrated places of pilgrimage of Shiite Islam. End note. As soon as this news had become known, the Babis from all parts decided to place themselves also safe from the hatred of their compatriots, and, going voluntarily into exile, whole families, in long caravans, proceeded or followed Baha'u'llah on his way to Baghdad. The community thus assembled on the banks of the Tigris was therefore composed of the most heterogeneous elements. Some, full of good will and zeal, hoped by work to remake for themselves the position they had lost in their own country. Others, like beasts, exhausted after a long pursuit, who take refuge in the midst of a dense thicket only thought of the possibility of escape from the fury of the mullahs who were fanaticizing the people against them all arrived with their respective weaknesses needs disappointments and ambitions without any other bond between them than that faith which had given them a like taste for sacrifice as well as a common hope of the near triumph of their ideas which would be the reward for all their sufferings the relative security they enjoyed in turkey following on the constant dangers which for so long had kept all the faculties on the watch ought necessarily to have had a most depressing influence on such a community especially if we call to mind that with rare exceptions none of them had known the bob and that only very few of them had been able to fathom his teaching they had devoted themselves to him with that naive enthusiasm which leads the crowds on the deliverer's steps in the belief that all that was necessary was to be enrolled under its flag and to be ready to shed one's blood in order to revolutionize the world when all miseries would at once be suppressed they did not know his doctrine certain of them even more simple than others only thought that that which was forbidden before the coming of the bob had become lawful 
since he had reformed the religion of muhammad we can imagine what troubles such a condition of mind must have caused among the little community arriving in an unknown country where the problems of material life assumed a most urgent and gloomy aspect and after the ruin that it had just experienced in its own country it fell to baha'u'llah's lot to bring a little order into the ideas and actions of the babis of baghdad immediately on his arrival he set himself to the task and up to the end of eighteen fifty four he entirely consecrated himself to his organizing work although nothing designated him officially as their leader from the earliest days he secretly confided to his most intimate friends that he felt himself called to take from thence on the direction of the movement and he led them to understand that he whom the bob had announced to them as being the supreme manifestation was none other than he himself and that god had given him the mission to direct them but he did not yet decide to make the news known as the friends were not yet prepared to understand it and the moment had not come to change the aspect of the movement on the contrary it was necessary for them to be penetrated by the teachings of the bob and put his doctrine into practice before it would become possible to lead his disciples towards new destinies this was known as his first declaration quite a secret one which in no wise pointed him out to the suspicions of the authorities and which left to the uninitiated all their ideas about the future evolution of the movement the influence he at once assumed over his companions in exile soon confirmed those to whom he had revealed his mission in the belief that he was not mistaken as to the extent of his powers he decided however to leave his companions to themselves for some time and probably desirous of seeking in the calm of peaceful seclusion the new strength which would be necessary for the accomplishment of his work he hastily set out from baghdad to the great despair of his friends without revealing to mortal the place of his retreat for two years he settled down in the mountains to the north of soleimaniye living the life of a hermit which frees man from all the fetters of society leaving him entirely to the source of inspiration the great communion with god and nature who can tell the power of strength thus stored up by one whose sole object is to use it for the good of his fellow creatures in spite however of every precaution baha'u'llah could not long remain unnoticed the news soon spread that a young sheikh possessed of marvellous knowledge had retired to kurdistan and from all sides people came to consult and converse with him about those inexhaustible metaphysical and theological problems in which the east is so much interested gradually the rumour spread to baghdad and his family and friends felt no doubt that it referred to him for whose departure they were grieving in all haste emissaries were sent to describe to him the lamentable state in which his absence left the community deprived of his counsel and to beseech him to return he came back from soleimaniye and set about giving to the babis the moral direction they so much needed he brought back with him from his retreat the conception henceforth fixed of the great principles which were to be the basis of the religion he wished to restore as well as a work entitled the book of certainty note kitabul iqan see the english translation by ali kuli khan and h mcnutt new york g v blackburn co 
1904. End note. Written by him in reply to a relative of the Bab, who had asked him what was meant by the proclamation of the young prophet who had just been martyred at Tabriz. In this work, of which the interest is still increased by the fact that in it Baha'u'llah does not yet speak from the standpoint of his new claim as he does in subsequent writings, but only as a disciple of the Bab, we see what constitutes the prophetic character. A curious interpretation of certain passages of the Old and New Testament, of the Qur'an and of the Hadiths, shows us how all the prophets can be considered as one, inasmuch as they all manifest, to a special degree, the divine spirit which animates them, and more especially from the Muslim point of view, how the coming of the Bab is clearly announced by all the apocalyptic prophecies of Islam. However, in certain pages of the book, as for instance in the concluding mystic lines, Note, revealed by the Baal and the Hau, and peace be upon those who hear the melody of the holy dove on the Sadratil Muntaha. Glory be to our Lord the Most High. End note. The initiated could read that the time was near when Baha'u'llah himself would announce to the world the mission with which he was charged. Besides this, his return amongst his own people quickly produced happy results. At first, the Babis, having returned to a life of conformity, gradually began to devote themselves to a fruitful activity which was unknown to them for many years. Then, as is always the consequence in like cases, the courage which they had shown in the moment of trial and the good fortune which now seemed to smile on them continually attracted even from the most remote corners of asia new adepts who formed in the country a most imposing party around baha'u'llah the shiite clergy was stirred up by it and the great mujtahed of karbala haji mirza javad did not rest till he had persuaded the persian consul at baghdad that this community was not only a peril to religion but that being so near to the iranian frontiers it endangered the empire itself and that it was his duty to apprise his government of it then a long correspondence ensued from eighteen sixty one to eighteen sixty two between the consul on the one side the governor of Kermanshah, note the province of Kermanshah, is the nearest to Iraq Arabi, in which Baghdad is situated, End note. and the minister of foreign affairs of Nasruddin Shah on the other, and soon the governments of Tehran and of Constantinople were led to consider the remedies that such a situation required. These were the two that they were either to give up Baha'u'llah to the governor of Kermanshah, in which case Persia would be responsible for him, or else, by transferring him to a more distant place, prevent him from any longer disturbing the peace of Iran. The Shah's government, of course, was inclined to the first solution, which appeared more radical. But the Sultan did not believe in giving up an exile who had the right of protection on Ottoman soil. In spite of the good understanding existing between the two states, Abdul Aziz felt rather satisfied not to be obliged to suppress too brutally a movement which he considered especially a peril to the abhorred Shiism. He decided to call Baha'u'llah to Constantinople, where it was said it would be easier to watch his doings he therefore sent to inform the governor of baghdad of the decision which had just been taken with reference to the notorious exile
End of section five.